Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to class. Um, so today's going to be a core day, but don't let that freak you out. Don't let that scare <laughs> you. Out. Um, <laughs> so I want you, we're going to start on our backs, but you're going to need a strap. And I grabbed this bright green one in hopes that you could see it. Um, and you're going to take that strap across your mat. Now, you can put a little something under your head. So if you want a pillow or a blanket or something, just nothing really big and thick. I do have something I'd like to read this morning, so I'll stay uh, seated. But when you come down, the strap is going to be basically underneath your lower back, okay? Underneath your low back. And we'll adjust it as uh, as we need to um, to get what we're going for today. Um, but I I started um, I did a, a a little bit of training stuff, and um, this was some training with uh, a teacher who was talking about uh, the number one purpose of our core muscles is stability, um, and it made so much sense to me. Uh, and then she had some uh, ways for us to access our core in uh, in yoga that hopefully will give us some awareness. So I'm going to ask you today to just go with it, be super inquisitive. If you don't get it, I think it might be a little challenging to teach, especially on the Zoom format. Uh, but just give it some thought, you know, give it some time and just see uh, what maybe you discover uh, today. And with that, I wanted to read, uh, Mark Nepo is one of my favorite poets. Um, and he sent out uh, one recently called A Posse of Kindness. And he says, at the party, I overheard you say, I want to help, but don't know how. I didn't know you yet, so I said nothing. But I woke in the night wanting to find you and say, just pick up the nearest blanket and look for someone who is cold. Or repair the thing next to you that is broken. Or if you're too tired or weak, just close your eyes and simply hold the unknown fate of others in the palm of your heart until a slow but glowing dawn starts to rise between us. To be the one caring gesture that outlasts the rest allows life to continue. Somewhere between the flit of a dragonfly and the earth turning on its axis, we remain possible. And I absolutely loved reading that, <laughs> excuse me, reminder of it it doesn't take a lot to show kindness to do the next nice or kind thing in our lives and with that i think anything is possible so with that let one hand be at the low belly and one hand be at the mid belly or the chest the shoulders are soft down to the floor that strap is underneath your lower back, but you're not paying too much attention to it right now. And as you take a nice deep breath, feel your lungs fill with oxygen. And exhale it all the way out. And then inhaling. And exhaling. Good, a few more right there, inhale. And exhale. Two more. Exhale. Last one. And 
and breathe normally just for now. As we exhale for the next five rounds, we're going to engage the pelvic floor muscles um, akin to Mula Bandha. And we're going to try to engage these pelvic floor muscles on the exhale without over tightening the belly. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. And again, I just want you to feel, try to find a sensation, a, a sense of the pelvic floor muscles drawing up, right, without bringing the abdominals in really strongly. They'll engage somewhat, but not too much. Hands are still at your belly and your upper belly, just so you can feel what's happening underneath. So inhale, nice deep breath. And as you exhale, feel the pelvic floor muscles draw in and up without an over-engagement of the belly. Release that to inhale. Exhale. Pelvic floor muscles draw in. Good, three more. And exhaling. Good, two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. And then release that fully. Take your feet wide on your yoga mat and just start to shift the knees side to side. Just a little shift. You can go small to start. Your hands can be wherever it feels comfortable for you. Rocking those knees side to side, go slow. And the next time those knees are over to the right, maybe pause for a moment. If you have knee pain, usually it'll be in the left. Just shift that left foot. Often if you just shift it closer to the other foot, it'll take that angle out and feel good. Um, and then maybe feel the stretch along the front of the left thigh maybe into the left side belly. Draw the left side ribs down toward the floor and do a little bit of a tuck of the pelvis. So we're just getting a little bit of a stretch in. Please don't try to bring the left knee down to the floor. No pressing down. If anything, we're pressing away. We're making that thigh longer. Good, just breathe here. Try to relax. Take a deep inhale. And an exhale. And then keep that belly engaged. Take the knees back to center. Go to the other side. Both knees are over to the left. First pause there. Just see how that feels. Adjust as you need to, especially if that right inner knee is feeling funky. And then soften the right side ribs down to the floor. A little bit of a tuck of the pelvis. Maybe a lengthening of the thigh, but not holding the breath. You maybe notice one side feeling tighter than the other or more sensation than the other. It's kind of interesting. Keep that belly engagement and bring the legs back to center. Just one more little stretch here. Bring the soles of the feet together, the knees out to the side, Baddha Konasana. Do me a favor here, lift your hips, really lengthen your tailbone, and, and then maybe rock the knees side to side. Go super easy again. It's not about bouncing or making anything deeper. It's allowing this body to trust what you're doing, to know that it is safe. Just rock those knees a little side to side. 
And then bring your center to stillness. Take a nice inhale here. Exhale. Draw the pelvic floor muscles up. And then release, bring those knees together. Good job, everybody. And then again, re just check that strap. See if it is underneath your back. If your legs are straight, um, go ahead and bend the knees, put your feet on the floor. Your feet are hips width apart. And then I want you to draw the back down into your strap. So we're doing a very strong tuck. We are literally flattening our back to the floor. Grab your strap on either side and see if that strap is locked underneath that strap. Just the best you can as I press down into my back, I'm pulling the strap on one side, it's not moving. I'm pulling the strap on the other side, it's not moving. You can let go of the strap and just feel this engagement. Again, your hands can be on your belly if you want. Take one hand behind your head, one hand to the middle of your belly, right over that belly button, and lift the head up and feel the engagement of your core, and then let the head go down. If you don't need to hold the head, just briefly, both hands on the belly, lift your head, feel the belly engage, and let that head come down. Good, just two more like that. Inhale first. Exhale, feel the belly and lower, good. One more here, inhale first, exhale, lift and lower. Good, nice job everybody. Just kind of shake that out a little bit and then stamp both feet on the floor. Grab that strap again on either side Press the back into the floor. You'll notice how quickly that strap will get loose. Hold it on either side so that you can tug, tug, and lift one foot off the floor and see if you still got that purchase on the strap or if it's slipping. Now, don't overwork this, everybody. If it's slipping a little bit, maybe you'll get it a little bit more later and then lower that foot Press your back into the floor. Pull on that other side of the strap as you lift that same side foot. Is the strap moving? Is it there? You are probably feeling your back already, right? Or your core already. And then just release for a second. And breathe. Good. Same thing. Press your back into the strap. Check to see if that strap is, is steady and not moving. Hold the lower belly, lift one foot off the floor. Here's the fun part. Bring that leg to 90 degrees. See if you can still hold on to that strap and not let it go. Lower that foot, keep your engagement. Lift the other one to about 90. Again, just tuck on the strap, see if it's still stationary and lower. Good, press down, lift the first leg. Here's where it's gonna get more tricky. I want you to inhale first. As you exhale, push into the strap. See if you can lift the other knee without rocking the pelvis or losing your strap. Lower that same side and lower the other one, right? This is seriously hard work for something this simple. So press down on the strap, lift the left knee, take it to 90. Squeeze it through your core. See if you can lift the other one to 90 without rocking or pushing off or losing your strap. Mine's a little bit loose here. And then lower your right and lower your left and take a moment break. Right, it's sort of fascinating to me when this kind of stuff happens. I'm like, what? All right, so this time I don't want you to hold your strap. So you can relax your upper body or put your hands back on your lower belly. Press your body or your back into your straps. Lift one knee to 90. What happened to your core? Did you feel it? Yeah. Right, thank you. <laughs> and then press down again. Exhale, lift the other knee and feel that. Right, you're still pressing into the strap. 
you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Think about boat pose here, right? When we bring those knees to 90 or we straighten the legs, I'm still holding, I know. Good. Exhale, lower slowly one foot to the floor. Ooh. Keep that engagement, lower the other foot to the floor, Ooh. and then let your back go. Let it just rock that pelvis a little bit. We're going to do one more on the other side, and then we're going to move on. All right, so press down, everybody. Feel the hands on the belly. Squeeze in, right? And there is, with that exhale, a little bit of mula bandha, a little bit of that drawing up of the pelvic floor muscles and even the, the sphincter muscles, right? Um, up and in a little bit. All right, so here we go. I'm going to lift the left foot. I'm going to try not to rock that, that leg too much, the pelvis. I'm going to find that, feel the belly, especially lower transverse abdominis, deepest core muscle. And then I'm going to see if I can lift the right foot without rocking around the pelvis too much, without losing the, the belly's engagement, pressing down into the floor. And then slowly lower the left foot. Slowly lower the right foot. Woo, good. Bring both knees to your chest. <laughs> I think that is just cool stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I am weird that way. <laughs> All right, both feet to the floor. Your right leg straightens. We're going to do this, and then we'll get up off the floor. So you've got your right foot on the floor. Or sorry, yeah, your right leg is straight. Your left leg is bent. You're going to take your left thumb to your lower ribs, and any one of your left fingers to your hip bone, right, that front hip bone. So what I have going on here for me is I've got my thumb resting on the lower ribs and I've got my pinky finger draped over the left side hip point. You're gonna hold that there <clears throat> and your pelvis, right? Inhale. Exhale, lift the right leg just a little bit, four, five, six inches and breathe. So right now we're working with the side body. Here's the key. You're pressing your left foot into the floor. You're going to take the right foot up to the right a little bit without rocking the pelvis and then or the knee and then bring the leg back in. Now the first few times I did this my left knee was wobbling and rolling and good. So you're bringing the leg out to the side Press your back into the floor. I didn't say that. Press your back into the floor. Out and in. Good. One more. Press it out. Press it in. Lower the right leg. Just relax. And then bend your right. Straighten your left. Same thing other side. Take a finger to that front hip bone. Take the thumb to the ribs. Press your back into the floor, which means you're going to rock to the top of that sacrum. Lift the left leg. Feel the right foot on the floor. Don't overlift that left leg. If you lift it too high, you'll lose it. And then see if you can slowly bring the left leg out to the left without the right side having to compensate. And then bring it in. Bring it out. Ooh, yeah. Good. Bring it in. Go slow. Notice if your knee is wobbly, that's normal, right? We're going to learn this stabilization. And out. And in. My, see what just happened? My lower back went, yeah, I'm off the floor. I'm done with that. And then release everybody. Press it down. Straight in your right leg. Good. From here, press your back toward the floor, it may not touch, that's okay. And then squeeze in through the hips and the glutes, the shoulders are down on the floor, this is all lower body. Your feet are pointing straight up, your hips are engaged, your lower back is as long as it can be. Lift one leg off the floor as you dig the other heel in. Not a high lift, keep it down lower, Judy. Yep, breathe. Lower, you're just lifting a couple, two, three, four inches. Lift the other leg while you dig the heel of the other in. Keep the hips level, good. And release everything. 
Bend those knees, listen up. Whew. Press your back into the floor. Take your left leg to 90, right? We just did this, but we're coming up a different way. So that knee is 90, the back is pushing into the floor, slowly lift the right leg to meet it. And then let both knees come over to the side and come on up to a seat. Whew. Yeah. So hopefully, did everybody feel that work a little bit, right? Just different, different, if nothing else. All right, inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, one hand down the other, arm over, and then open up through that side body, right? Breathe, take that hand behind your head. Open up the elbow, stretch through the chest. Good, very mindful here. You're gonna bring that elbow down toward your knee. Not everybody's gonna to touch. That's a big, big stretch. And then inhale, open, exhale. Inhale, open, exhale it down. Good, two more, open. I want you to go slow, exhale. Good, last one, take it up. Exhale down toward your knee. And then take the elbow up, extend the arm, take both arms up, both arms down. Ooh, good. Change out the legs if you always sit the same way, right? I always sit the same way unless I'm thinking about it. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, other arm down. Reach it over, open up the chest. One hand behind the head. Now you're not pulling on the head, right? That should be, that should be obvious. Take the elbow back and then just take it down. Go slow. You might not go as far on this side. Inhale, reach up. By the way, if you're sitting in a chair right now, you can do this in the chair. Just watch your back and take it up. Good. Exhale. Inhale up. Two more. Last one up. Exhale it down. And up, hold, extend out. Reach both arms up. Exhale them both down. Good. Roll those shoulders. And then take the arms to cactus and twist to one side. I just want you to hold. The arms stay high. Watch that you're not overturning your neck. If it feels stressed, right? If the neck muscles feel stressed, back it off. And then stay in the twist, but spread the elbows away from each other. Woo! Yeah, breathe. And then take everything to center. Twist the other way. And breathe. Find the twist first, nice and tall. And then spread the elbows away from each other. Big, deep breath and release and set those down, shake all that out and take the feet to the front of your yoga. In fact, you could probably grab one block here, everybody. We will get moving, but I want to try to get close to the floor work done while we're still here. But so we're going to dig those heels in. We're going to take our hands to our chest and you're going to roll back and allow the back to, to round a little. So, right, always we just preach this lift of the chest. But this time I want you to soften it. I don't want you getting all like really round, but soften the lower back. Squeeze in. If you're back too far and this is just not happening, you come up a little bit higher, okay? And then lift one foot. Not too high, not too low. You're not letting the chest concave, but you're not over lifting. Keep it soft. And lower, lift the other. And lower, lift the first. Squeeze in through the belly, lift the other, not high. I know, harder, right? This is harder than both. Breathe and lower the both down, roll over those knees, everybody. Take a deep breath. And let that go. Grab hold of your block. So lean back. You've got your block. Now we've done these variations a dozen times. So do your best. You're digging in again. You've got the block. 
We're going to start by just an easy side twist. Now, what are we doing with your core? Engage the core, maybe a little bit of Mula Bandha, right? A little bit of pelvic floor engagement here. And I want you to keep the block close to your knees so that you really stay in the waist. You stay in those obliques and breathe and pause. Good, find this. So next thing we're gonna do is take one heel off, take the other heel off, go elbow to knee, elbow to knee. You can cross your ankles, by the way, a little more stable, elbow, knee, Woo! knee, come on. Slow, breathe, yep, last two, I promise. And take it down, Ooh, straighten those legs, shake everything out. Set your block aside for now. Good, bend your knees, hands come behind you, squeeze in through your belly, draw your shoulders back, push up, squeeze your hips and down. Press it up and down. And three, press. And down, good. Four, lift and cross. Down, last one. And five, squeeze the hips, lift those hips, and lower it down, everybody. We're gonna come to table pose. So if you can, just cross your knees and flip on over. If you cannot, <laughs> go sideways and come up to your hands and your knees. You won't need your blocks or anything for now. If you're working with your chair, you're going to have your hands on your chair, just like we normally do. And actually grab one of your blocks, because we need this just for a little bit of feedback. Sorry about that. I want you to take your block to your lumbar spine, okay? So not your sacrum, but your back, your low back. And feel that when you drop your lower back, so when you drop into an arch, just feel that block behind you. I know it's lightweight. And then press through it and almost go a little bit concave, right? Just a little bit. So we're really drawing the belly in as if we were on the floor. Your head is neutral. Squeeze the low belly in. Just take your right arm out and lift the right arm a little higher than the shoulder. Do you feel your belly? And lower down. Again, concave slightly, Mula Bandha slightly, lift the left arm. Right, I don't feel a lot of core there, but as soon as I lift that arm up higher, I feel that whole left side going, hey, wait a minute, I gotta get balanced here. And lower down. Good, take the right leg straight out. Check your block, adjust it, and then squeeze in so that block feels flat. You're lifting your right leg, you're engaging the core. Take the left arm out. You're looking down at your mat. Maybe lift the left arm a little higher. And breathe, not the leg. And lower, slowly lower down. Bring the left leg back, squeeze the belly in, lift the leg, how's your block doing? Lengthen that tailbone, take the right arm out. Maybe lift the right arm a little higher, but don't lose the concave or the toning in of that belly. And lower down, good job everybody, go ahead and take that block off. Feel free to give that wrist a little shake, a little love, and then come on back to table pose. Your toes are flipped under. Your belly draws in like you were gonna press that back to the floor. When you're, once you're there, draw the inner elbows in, open up those shoulders, see if you can lift the knees off the floor and breathe. And notice, right, do you want to lift that tailbone? Draw the tailbone under, draw the belly in, 
hold your pose, and then press back to downward facing dog. Once you're in down dog, let's pedal that baby out. Right, stretch out through the back of the legs, feel the stretch. Even this pedaling out should be relatively slow. Give your muscles a chance to respond to the stretch. And breathe. Good, from downward facing dog to plank. Same concept, a slight concave, right? A draw in of that belly from the pubic bone to the belly button. Breathe as you press out through, yet the legs are energized. And then just lower the knees, whew, keep the toes flipped under, lift the knees, just an inch or two. Squeeze in through the belly, find your breath. Good, press back to down dog, breathe. Notice, start to tilt forward the plank. This is our last one for now. Squeeze an imaginary beach ball, check the hips, right? Can we squeeze in from the pubic ball to the belly button and still stay lifted like we're knitting our abdominal muscles toward each other. Lower the knees, Woo. flip your toes under. Last one, I promise. And get off these wrists, lift the knees, and breathe. Lower the knees, everybody. Step forward with your right foot. Grab your blocks. Again, if you're still with me, you know who you are. And you're using a chair. Your hands go to your chair, your right leg forward, and you're in a lunge. Take your hands to your knee. And breathe, <laughs> says the teacher. <laughs> All right. So again, feel this, right? Feel this, feel this. Draw in a little bit. As soon as you draw in, as soon as you lay in, you'll get that stretch through the left thigh, ideally. And then take the left arm up and breathe. And where are you? Do you feel stable? Check your back foot. Is it pointing straight back? Or is it sickling into the side a little bit? That's it. You got this, everybody. Take the other arm up. Squeeze the imaginary beach ball. Press into the back foot. You got it. And then slowly come down. Slow, slow, slow. Bring the elbows toward, you, toward your side and then reach it back. And then bring the hands back to your shoulders. And lift up. And exhale, bring them down and back. Good, last one, bring them in and up. And then just drop your right hand down and take the left arm over and keep yourself sta uh, stable. Right now we're not holding on to anything, so we gotta work these core muscles to keep us even. And up, exhale down. Good, fly that right leg back. And switch sides. So your hands are on your blocks to start. Your legs are hips with apart. Your back foot is straight back. Take your hands to your knee. And then draw the lower belly in. Feel the stretch, the shoulders are open. Take the right arm up. Find your stability. Right, it's kind of an interesting thing to me that how do we come into a lunge and draw this hip, this right side hip in and under just a little bit. Great, take the other arm up. Find your breath. Here we go, bring them in close. You're going slow. Reaching the arms back. And then you're bringing them in to take them up. Good. Exhale. And inhale. Woo and then drop your left hand down. 
Take your right arm over. Notice the wobble, right? Notice the wiggle here. And take them both up. Both hands down. Slide your left foot back. Move your blocks forward out of the way just for a moment and find downward facing dog again. <laughs> and breathe. Now, optional one, you stay here or come on down. That's too long for you. Uh, other option is to lift the right leg, level the pelvis, point the toes, but don't over lift. There you go, Adriana. Right, so we don't want to skew the hips. Breathe, and then step that leg all the way through. Oh. Hands to blocks. Belly engages, right? There's this automatic, like as soon as you draw your pubic bone to your belly button, whoo, that left thigh lifts up. You notice that, right? If you just let it drop, versus if you, if you pick it. Left. Hands to knee, remember left knee can be on the floor. Check your pose, good. If you can, back heel is straight, if you can. This leg, right, the inner thigh, I'm trying to demo at the same time. The inner thigh actually drops down a little bit. Back glute is active, take the arms up. Find your breath, squeeze in through the belly. Drop the right hand down, reach the left arm over. It does not take much. Find your balance. Take both arms up, both elbows in, reach back, press forward. You're lifting way on the ball mound of your back foot. And then feel the heel descend as the chest rises. Woo! And hands to blocks. Lower your knee. Let go of those poor toes. Which side? Actually, sorry, let's start in down dog so we can have that leg lift. If you want. If you don't want, just stay on that switch side. It's okay. So you're in down dog. The left leg rises. Don't over rise. Tuck in through the belly. Point the toes. And then slide that knee forward to come into a lunge. Bring your hands to your blocks. Look at your pose. Look at your feet. Right front knee. Press through the back leg. Tuck the pelvis a little bit. Bring your hands to your knee. Find your breath. Take the arms up. Where are you in your pose, everybody? Left hand down, right arm over. That's it. Both arms up, elbows in, reach back. Inhale it up. Ooh, that one was tricky. One side, usually stronger than the other. Let's do it one more time. Squeeze it back. Breathe. And up, wowee. And then take your hands to your blocks. Walk the blocks forward and push off to step forward. Walk your blocks even further forward and come into this very weird kind of partly between a forward fold and a down dog. Press back through the hips, feel the stretch through the hamstrings. <clears throat> and then from here, I want you to draw the pubic bone up to the belly button. And notice what that did, if anything. Good. Soften the knees. Bring those blocks back. Hands to knees. And come on up. Woo! <laughs> and shake all that out. Right? It's just amazing to me. Good. Pardon me for a minute, taking that light off of my head. <laughs> it was too much. Good. <clears throat> and then just feel that, right? So how do we engage core? Grab one block. 
take it in. If I'm mirroring here, I would take it in my right hand and I think I'll just grab the short end so that that side hangs. <laughs> Everything else gets active, legs active, glutes active, belly tones in, and I'm just gonna slide this down and feel that, and then slide the other arm up, don't overdo. And I'm gonna pull them both back up and let that go, switch hands. First, I'm gonna slide down, this is super active. And then I'm gonna slide the other arm up and over, and then we'll pull it up, right? So it's, it's this kind of motion, switch sides. <laughs> I don't think I made this many sound effects when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happens. <laughs> so this time, if the block's in my right hand, take your left hand to your waist and slide down and then squeeze it up and slide down and squeeze, right? For some, this could be so subtle, squeeze. And last one and squeeze it up, good, switch sides, hand to waist, down you go, and squeeze it in, and down, so squeeze, it's like you're taking your ribs and your hip, and you're trying to bring them closer together, good, last one, and squeeze, good, and then just hold your, actually, get rid of your block, we won't need it for this, so get rid of your block, Take your hands together, one hand on top of the other. Come on down with elbows to knee, if, knees if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it, come higher. You're gonna squeeze in. So if I turn sideways, everybody, right? If I first come here for me, I feel like my, you know, I'm really kind of archy here. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is squeeze the belly in. And then I'm gonna look forward. Push into your right foot and take the left knee up. And then set it back down, bring the elbows back down. Push, first squeeze the belly in, and then push in as you lift. And then set it down. Good, add the arms this time. First belly in, lengthen your back, look forward, and take the arms with you and back down, tuck in, lift up, Ooh. and back down, good, last two, take it up, are you engaging your belly, and down, and up, Whoop. left ankle, and down, elbows to knee, both heels lift. You can even rest your chin on those hands, right? Everything compact, everything working. Squeeze your belly. One, you're here, two, you're done, three. Let the hands reach back, you're still on those ball mounds. Whew. And then stand up. Come on down. Lift the heels, squeeze that belly, reach the arms back, stand up. Woo. We got one left, everybody. Hang in, come on. Here we go, down first, heels second, arms third, stand up, and exhale. Good, shake that out. I know, right? If you all are getting warm, you can open a, a door. <laughs> it may be locked, Kristen, but just unlock it. Whew. <laughs> so just notice, how does this feel, right? How does that feel in your body? If you can, so take your hands to like just the sides here. And then imagine, right, you'll hear some teachers talk about bringing the hip points in. So your hands are here. So without actually curling in, see if you can knit 
in and notice that, right? And right away, when I do that, my hips engage, my glutes engage. So feel that. Good. And then keep that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, just a forward fold. Bent knees. You can stop at the knees. You can take your hands to your knees. But then again, notice, right, as we're in this forward fold, what happens if I draw the low belly in and then extend through the ribs? And breathe. You're at the front of your mat. If not, walk your way to the front of your mat. Bend the knees, step back, both legs down dog. And breathe. Now, wherever you are in your dog, in fact, get to a point in your down dog where your feet are pretty darn flat. They're on the floor, right? So for me, that's a short downward facing dog. And breathe. Your head is between your arms. Your hands are reaching out from those wrists. The upper back is engaged. And then walk both feet about a half of a footprint back. Don't move the hands. Come out if you need to. And pause. Look at your feet. Walk them about a half of a footprint back. Keep everything else the same. Your heels are either off the floor or getting super light. Walk them a half of a print back. Now we're getting long. Ooh. Press back through the heels. Good. One more time. Press those feet back. This time, look forward, come into plank, and hold. Adjust your feet so it feels like a good plank. Tone the belly in. Don't drop the head. Tap the knees and lift. And two, and tap. Good. Don't let your low back sink. This is a great class for you, Adriana. Lift. And four. Come on, five more, everybody. Five more. I did warn you, it is core. Five, four, don't let the head drop. Three, two, and one. Lower one knee, lower the other knee. Come to child's pose or hero pose or something in that variation, something that allows you to rest. And breathe. <clears throat> That's it. Couple more breaths here, everybody. And then come on up. We're going to lay on one side. If you can, you're on elbow, okay? If you can. Your knees are stacked. If you want some cushion under the elbow or under the hip, grab your blanket and put it underneath that, right? Underneath you, it'll feel, it'll probably feel good. <clears throat> as far as this elbow, I care mostly that your shoulder and your elbow are fairly straight up and down reasonably speaking, right? Um, where you put your forearm is gonna be where it feels best for you. And if you go side pinky or flat hand is up to you. So from here, take the top hand to the underside ribs and pull them up Whew. and feel again, the engagement there and then lift the top knee off the floor and straighten the leg. Now notice that as you straighten this leg, what happens to the ribs? Whew, they wanna sink. So pull those up, turn the toes down of that top leg and tap your toe. Tap, keep the other side lifted. Two, three, it's not gonna go high. That leg's not going high. Four, try not to sink in through the low ribs. Five, hold the leg. Take that hand behind your head. Good, elbow to knee, Whew, squeeze it in and then press it out, squeeze. The, the emphasis is on the squeeze, and down, good, four, 
one more straight five hold right here hold elbow to knee elbow to knee let that hand go from your head just point the hand up pull the underside ribs back in oh good breathe everybody only if you want from here grab your shin your ankle your knee and straighten it pull the underside ribs in and let go Ooh, come on up <laughs> it's fine Ooh, i know it's like what the heck <clears throat> so before class started what did you ask me lynn is it a sneaky core class or a what was your other word <laughs> a little bit of both right so we're back on the other elbow we're pulling those ribs in notice if the top shoulders rolling to the floor if it is roll it back out take that top hand to the underside ribs pull them in lift the other leg pull those ribs in right as soon as you move everything wants to drop it's really interesting and then straighten that leg, turn the toes down, pull the ribs in, and tap the toe for five. One, two, three. You're just trying to keep those underside ribs from dropping. Four and five. Good. Hold that leg. Take that hand behind your head. Lift the ribs. Bring elbow to knee and straighten right so here the the ribs are probably going to drop there's no way not to and three and four squeeze good and five hold release that hand from your head just hold pull the ribs in everybody yep keep working those underside ribs and then grab foot chin knee straight in that leg up any amount Pull the ribs in, good, better, and lower down, oh, and sit up, Ooh, good, just stretch out that side. So if you can, both knees are, both feet are pointed to one side, so if I were mirroring here, I'd be leaning on my right hip, and both my feet are heading to the left, yeah, right, more complicated than it, uh, sounds more complicated than it is. And then just draw that right shoulder, again, mirroring here, right shoulder down. Take the top arm up and breathe. And then bring the elbow to that outer hip. Bring the elbow to the outer hip and feel the squeeze there. We have internal and external obliques that work together. So just here, you should feel this crunch of the hip. And then reach it up and over and squeeze it in. I want you to go slow on the squeeze and squeeze like you're pulling down on a tight rope and up, good, squeeze, good, last one, up and squeeze, 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 hold that and see if you can take the other hand off the floor. You're not doing anything with it, you're just taking it off the floor to find that balance and then let go, Whew. good, turn to the other side. Anybody feeling their side body? <laughs> it's amazing okay shoulder is down the elbow is soft we're on our side right take the other arm up and squeeze it down to your hip so you bring an elbow down the hip and squeeze slow and lift squeeze slow everybody good two more squeeze yep <laughs> and squeeze hold here find your balance take that other arm off the floor without over lifting we're staying tilted to that side right so that this has to work like crazy to keep us there and let go Whew. good job everyone i know you think we're done we're getting super close i want you to come to table pose <clears throat> Woo. And a few cats and cows here just to soften all that up. Woo. Downward facing dog. Take your feet wide, squeeze in through your belly, walk those hands back, bend the knees, come on up all the way. And again, 
feel the side body, right? Been, been doing a ton of work there with the obliques and the core, right? So we have the six pack abs, the rectus abdominis. You see those pictures of the airbrushed <laughs> models, just saying. That's the surface, right? Those are often the tightest or strongest. They should not be. We want the deep transverse abdominus muscles to be the muscle that supports this core. The other ones are layered on top of that. So plant your feet, hands to hips, lean in one. In fact, lean into your mirror here, lean into your left leg, take your right hand to your belly and lift that leg and see if you can come to 90 and breathe. Keep tucking in. Take the knee out to the side. Come into tree without using your hands. Press your thigh into your hand, uh, foot, your foot into your thigh, wherever you are. Level out your hips. Take the arms up and breathe. Here's the hardest part of this. Your same side leg hand goes down. See if you can lean. Find your focus and breathe. <laughs> you can play if you're feeling good with balance, you can play. How far do you go? And take it up and let it go. Shake that out. Whew. Right, even if you just like do this and you feel your belly muscles just like moving around. All right, other side, standing tall. Whew. If I'm mirroring, it'll be your right, my left, hand to belly. Just hold that in, feel that. Shift in, tighten everything up, and lift the leg. And breathe. Take the knee out to the side. Just find wherever it lands, right? I know it's, it's hard to not adjust that, but as long as it's not pushing into the knee directly, whew, find your balance. Goodness gracious. And take both arms up. Squeeze the standing leg. Take the same side hand down. Don't watch me. <laughs> and slide over. Push the standing leg into the foot to find your balance. Yep, you got it, everybody. Smile. Maybe play. Woo! Right? How far can you go? And take both arms up and come on down. Ah, that was ugly. <laughs> it's windy out. All right, so back to tree. Roll the shoulders. In fact, do me a favor here. Come to a wall space. This was also kind of an interesting thing. So we're back in tree or back in a mountain pose and just take your fingertips to a wall just so you have a balance here for this i want you to take this outside leg whichever hands on the wall take the outside leg and lift it up and then you're going to take your shin or your foot not like we would normally but you're going to take it more sideways it might feel funky i'll try to stand forward so you can see Right, so we're going to take it more sideways so that the heel is back. So Adriana, that heel goes to the back thigh. And the sole of the foot is more in. Yep, feel that? And then just see if you can find that level hip. You'll, it should be easier. And then just slide the toes down. And hold your, and then squeeze your glutes and take your hands off the wall. So what that did, this was just a little shift in the hip um, itself. And I learned this one from Doug Keller, uh, great yoga teacher. <laughs> and <laughs> I love to talk with my hands. Um, and so what he said was, so often we do an external rotation and then bring it up. And we may not be seating the hip as well as we should. <sighs> so how did that feel? Turn the foot back kind of to the side. Bring the knee forward, release, and set it down. Shake that out. Same thing other side. I like the wall just while you're playing with something new. So first it's mountain pose. <sighs> yep. 
and maybe your fingertip comes to a wall just for stability, first bring the knee straight up. Squeeze the standing leg. Turn the foot in so it's really the sole of the foot that's come into. So Lynn, turn your toes so your toes are pointing almost forward. Yeah, it's funky and it depends on you know your body and your hips. So feel that the heel of your foot should be reaching toward the back thigh. Yeah. And then just drop the toes down and release the hip down and find tree. And then maybe take your hands to your heart or up, right? Wherever the hands feel. Belly tones in, tailbone tucks slightly. And release and shake that out. So a couple different ways to play with tree pose. And we're going to be working on that more over the next probably few weeks. All right, back to the front of your mat. Now I'm, now I'm done with that. <laughs> Inhale, reach up. Exhale, take it down. Step back to down dog. Go ahead and lower down to your knees. Wasting no time here. And come on to your butt. Have one block nearby. Maybe your strap, I don't know that we'll get to that, but maybe your strap. So just have those close. And then come on down with your feet on the floor. And once again, I want you to imagine that strap is behind your lower back and you're pressing that back into your strap. What did that, what does that do? When you do that, what do you do, right? What happened to our tailbone? It just lengthened, right? Lengthened out toward that, those heels. Think of bridge pose. Think of your transverse abdominus. So we've already gotten there. You can rest your hands on your belly if you want and just push into one foot and lift the other just an inch or so. Where did you feel that engagement? What had to happen for you to lift that foot, right? For me, my left foot is stamped on the ground. My left side abdominals just went, just fired up. And then lower that down. Same thing, flatten the back, push into your right foot, lift your left. What do you feel? It can be subtle, the transverse abdominus engaging to keep us balanced because we only have one foot on the floor. So think about every time you walk, every time you take stairs, one foot on the floor at, the, at, at a time and how those muscles have to work. And lower down. Press into both feet. Lengthen your tailbone. Lift your hips. Don't overlift. Just lift. Press into your left foot. Lift your right. Don't lift high, lower, level everything out, lift the other. Good, lower, level everything out. My hands are right at my hip bones and my low belly. Lift, feel the opposite side engage to hold you in place. Lower, lift, and lower. Good, this time really lengthen your tailbone, come into your regular bridge pose. Hands can either be down, they can be fingers pointing up, or you can interlace those hands underneath you, whatever feels good. If you have something under your head, that is really not the best idea, okay? Because it'll jam up your neck. It can, it won't necessarily, but it can. So please be mindful here. Lengthen through your quads, press your knees forward. Release the hands if you have them interlaced and lower all the way down. Whew. Press into your left foot, take your right leg to 90. Breathe, see if you can lift the left without rocking the pelvis. Notice if that got easier. Drop the right foot, keep it level. Drop the left foot. Same thing, other side, press your back down, lift your left knee. 
See if you can lift your right. Breathe. Drop the left. Drop the right. Woo! Nice job, everybody. Did anybody in the room notice that was easier than the first time? <laughs> I got a little bit. <laughs> Grab one of your blocks. Take it underneath your sacrum, not your lower back. Take it under your sacrum. Whew. That should feel pretty good. <sighs> Draw your right knee to your chest. Straighten your left leg, little psoas stretch here. You can hold your right knee. You don't have to, but you can if you want. Just don't over pull, right? Don't pull the right knee in because then you're just going to throw those SI joints off. Just let it be soft. If you want, left arm overhead, left leg straight, left arm overhead. Your head is neutral, your neck is neutral. Try to soften into this, everybody. Just breathe. Try to do less instead of more here. Lower the left arm if it's overhead. A slight engagement with your belly as you bring the left knee up. Once the left knee is up, go ahead and straighten the right leg long. Try to relax into it. Maybe take the right arm overhead. Can you let go here a little more? Little bit of engagement here as we bring the right leg up, both legs up, release that right arm, by the way. Both legs up if you're comfortable with this. And then play with where your sacrum is. Again, for some people, the sacrum being a little flatter feels good. For others, being on that top edge of the sacrum but not in the lower back feels really nice. Those legs can just hover. Breathe. Try to let go of any unnecessary tension here.
Bend the knees and let those knees come to chest. One foot to the floor, then the other foot. Press into both feet, lengthen your tailbone, lift your hips, take the block out, and then lower one vertebra at a time from the top to the bottom. And then allow the back to arch a little and then tuck. And arch just a few pelvic tucks and tilts here. <sighs> and then find neutral. One leg straightens, the other leg straightens, and we come into Shavasana. Once you're in Shavasana, find yourself fully relaxing here. Make sure that you're not Cold, they're going to get cold. Shoulders are down. The jaw softens, the eyes soften, the space behind the eyes softens. And the throat and the chest and the belly soften. And the hips and the legs and the feet. Soften down. Soften down even more. Start to wiggle your toes. And then bend the knees and let your feet come to the floor. 
Pause here for a moment. And then draw your chest, <laughs> draw your knees to your chest. Let's rock a little side to side. Allow the knees to roll to one side. Going over to fetal pose here. And then press on up. Take your arms up. Exhale them to your heart. Bow to your own inner goodness. Send yourself love, send it out to others. Namaste, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody.